Today's notes all a review of different things of power series like convergence, radius of convergence, operations with power series, so adding, subtracting, things like that. And then tomorrow's notes, you will be solving differential equations using power series. Okay, first thing to review what a power series is. Power series is an infinite series of the following form. Summation from n equals 0 to infinity. Some constant in terms of n. And then x minus a to the n power. So that's what the power series are that we're going to look at. This is called a power series that is centered at a. So an example, we might have the sun sum from n equals 1 to infinity. So it's not always going to start at 0. This one is starting at 1. The constant is negative 1 to the n plus 1 power over n squared. So that's the c of n. And then we have x to the n power. This is a power series that is centered at 0. We also need to review what it means to converge. So we say that a power series converges at x if the limit as m approaches infinity, the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, c, t sorry, this is an m is n equals 0, this is that m, c to the n, x minus a to the n exists. So remember, this is a summation, so you're finding a whole bunch of terms, adding them all together, going to infinity. If that sum does exist, then we say that the power series converges. Okay, one thing to remember is that for a specific value of x, the power series is going to be a series of constants. So if you pick a value of x, it's just going to be a series of constants. Oftentimes, we are interested in the interval of convergence. The interval of convergence is the set of all values For which the series converges. Okay, so we're going to review later in today's notes how to find the interval of convergence. The interval of convergence is related to the radius of convergence. Okay, so radius of convergence for your power series, so the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, c to the n, x minus a to the n. So for that power series, there are three possibilities. Possibilities in terms of the radius and interval of convergence. First possibility is that the series only converges at one value. For this power series, what value do you know definitively that the power series is going to converge at? What value of x? A. OK, every power series converges at A. Right? If you plug a in, every constant is going to be 0. If this is the case, your radius of convergence is just 0. So every power series at least converges at x equals a. Other possibility, or the second possibility, is that your power series converges for all x satisfying the inequality absolute value of x minus a is less than r. 
r has to be greater than zero. So this would give you the interval of convergence. That's the radius. So that is another possibility. What is the last possibility? Converges for all x. In that case, the radius is infinity. Radius convergence. Okay, so we're going to look at our first example. First example, we are going to determine the radius of convergence of the following power series. The sum from n equals 1 to infinity quantity x plus 1 to the n over n times 2 to the n. Okay. Do you guys remember in BC how you learned all those different convergence tests? Okay. I don't expect you to know all of them. We are going to use one. Any guess as to what test we're going to use? Not the nth term test. Try again. Does not have a P in it. Starts with an R. <laughs> yes, ratio test. <laughs> okay. Is it fair to assume that we need a quick review of the ratio test? Okay. Okay, for the ratio test. Define L to be the limit as n goes to infinity, the absolute value of A of n plus 1 over A of n, for the series that is the summation of A of n. Three possibilities here for L. L could be less than 1, L could be greater than 1, or L could be equal to 1. If L is less than 1, what does that mean about the series? Converges. Converges. L is greater than 1 means that the series is, diver series is divergent. L is equal to 1. Inconclusive. Okay, so for the power series we have, L is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity. For in our power series, we, we need to replace n with n plus 1. So we have x plus 1 to the n plus 1 power over n plus 1, 2 to the n plus 1. Denominator is just going to be the regular power series with n. Okay, I'm going to simplify this as much as I can. I'm going to rewrite the first term. I'm then going to take the reciprocal of the second term. Okay, simplifying, we have x plus 1, just to the first power. We have that n. If we simplify the 2's, we're going to end up with 2 in the denominator. So we'll do n plus 1 times 2. Okay, all that we are changing is n, so anything that doesn't have an n can be pulled out. So this is really the absolute value of x plus 1 over 2 times the limit as n goes to infinity of x, not x, n over n plus 1. 
Bless you. This limit is just one. So that L in the very beginning is now just the absolute value of X plus one over two. From our review of the ratio test, we know that the series converges when L is less than one, which tells us that absolute value of X plus one over two has to be less than one. If we multiply the two over, we get the absolute value of X plus one is less than two. This two then is our radius of convergence. Are you guys okay solving this inequality to find the two endpoints? Yeah, so set that equal to two and negative two, you'll get two endpoints. Those two endpoints then end up being one and negative three. Okay, for the interval of convergence, you have to check the two endpoints. Okay, so we know that our interval of convergence is that negative three x to one, so like that. We also know that the series diverges when the absolute value of x plus 1 is greater than 2. So that would be when x is less than negative 3, where x is greater than 1. And then, like I said, we have to check the two endpoints specifically. So if we look at x equals 1, what you're going to do then is you're going to plug x equals 1 into the summation. So we get the sum from n equals 1 to infinity, 2 to the n over n times 2 to the n, which is the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n. Do you all remember if that converges or diverges? This one diverges. Okay, then x equals negative 3, we have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 2 to the n over n times 2 to the n. That negative 2 to the n, if you think of it as negative 1 to the n times 2 to the n, you'll end up with negative 1 to the n over n. What about that one? Do we remember? This one converges conditionally. Okay, so our final interval of convergence then, we do include negative three, we don't include one. We're gonna review in a minute what absolute, conver absolute convergence means, and that'll help with the converges conditionally. Are we enjoying our review of power series so far? Yeah? Okay. Oh, man. Okay. Going on. Review of absolute convergence. Because that'll help with that converges conditionally part. We say that a series, the one we've continually written the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, c of n, x minus a to the n power. That series converges absolutely if, take that same sum, but take the absolute value. If that also converges. So if you take the absolute value and your sum still converges, that's called converging absolutely. So that should make sense here then above why this only converges conditionally. If we take the absolute value, we're going to be back at 1 over n. 
Okay, something important to know, and I think that you probably know this already, a power series converges absolutely. within, so inside its interval of convergence. But you're going to need to test the endpoints. So just like we did above. Okay, we have a few other ideas to review and then we'll do a few other examples. Okay, next thing I want to talk about, interval of convergence. Okay, so we just went over that. We used the ratio test. We can use the ratio test to come up with um, a general way to find the interval of convergence. If you're looking for the radius of convergence, which helps find the interval of convergence, you're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity, absolute value of c of n over c of n plus 1. Okay, so if we look back at example number 1, Radius is the limit as n goes to infinity. Okay, from our series, we do not have to include that x plus 1. So we have 1 over n times 2 to the n, and then 1 over n plus 1, 2 to the n plus 1. So this is going to become part of the numerator. So we get n plus 1, 2 to the n plus 1 over n times 2 to the n. So we get n plus 1 over n times 2. That is 1, so we just get our radius to be 2. So it's kind of exactly what we did with the ratio test, just maybe a little bit quicker. So then, if you're looking for the interval of convergence, you have that x plus 1, and it'll be less than your radius of 2. x plus 1 comes from the power series. Questions so far? Okay, last idea before we look at some examples. Please remember that a power series represents a function so if our f of x is that same power series that we've been writing if you expand that so if you plug in n equals 0 you're going to get c of 0 plus Plug in 1, you get c of 1 times x minus a, plus c of 2 times x minus a squared, etc. The reason I want to review that is I'm going to ask you to find the derivative of f, or you might be asked to integrate f. If that's the case, you just go term by term. So you would differentiate each term or integrate each term. Also, what you're going to have to do in your homework is you are also going to have to add and subtract power series. Okay. Questions before we do some more examples. Okay. Here's our next example. 
we are going to write x squared times the summation from n equals 0 to infinity, parentheses r plus n, a of n, x to the power un n r plus n minus 1. We are going to write that as a series whose generic term involves x to the r plus n. Okay, so this is what we are starting with. First thing that you're going to want to do is multiply that x squared in. So now we have the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of r plus n, a of n, x to the r plus n plus 1. Okay, so the issue here is that plus 1. So here would be my suggestion. Start plugging in a few numbers and see what you get this x to be. Because we're not really concerned about that, we're concerned right here. If we plug in n equals 0, we get x to the power r plus 1. If we plug in n equals 1, we get x to the power r plus 2. Okay, so here's what we can do then. What happens if we started it at n equals 1? If we started at n equals 1, you're going to end up with r plus 1. If you start at, if you then go to n equals 2, we'll get r plus 2, which is what we wanted. So we're going to start from n equals 1 to infinity. Here we have x to the r plus n then. Okay. When we started by plugging in n equals 0, though, we should end up with just r. When we plug in n equals 1, again, we just want r. So this is going to become r plus n minus 1. This a, instead of the n, it's going to be the n minus 1. If you plug in a few values, you'll see that this still ends up being true. If you plug in 0, we get r. If we plug in 1, we get r. Again, we get 0. There, we get 1. So this is the summation that we are looking for. Does that make sense? This is a very important skill. You're going to need to have this skill for the next well, for the rest of power series. So it's important to be able to shift the indices to get it in a form that you want it in. Okay, that's the first skill. Next thing we're going to practice, so in example three, we are going to find the first four terms of a power series in x for the product e to the x multiplied by cosine of x. Okay. We're going to try to remember the Maclaurin series for both of these. e to the x One plus x plus x squared over two factorial, x cubed over three factorial, etc. That's the summation from n equals zero to infinity of x to the n over n factorial.
cosine of x? Does not start with x. Starts with 1. Okay, so this is the summation from n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n over 2n factorial. Okay, so if we want to find the first few terms, uh, there's not like a trick to this. You're actually going to have to multiply them out. So I'm going to write out the first few terms of each. Okay. First two terms are easy, and then it gets harder. If we do 1 times 1, that's the only term that's going to give us a constant. So then we've got to ask ourselves, is there any way to get an x? If we do x times 1, we get an x. That is the only way to get an x. Then if we look at x squared, what are all the ways we can get x squared? If we multiply 1 by this term, we get a negative 1 half. If we multiply 1 by that term, we get a positive 1 half. Okay, so then we got to figure out how are we going to get x to the third. If we multiply this term by 1, that will give us an x to the third. So that the coefficient on that term will be 1 sixth. Another way to get x to the third is this x times that x squared. So that will be a negative 1 half. Okay, this term is going to be 0, so technically we've only found three terms so far. We need to find one more. Okay, x to the fourth is trickier. How many different ways can we get x to the fourth? Mia, what do you think? Three. It is three. Yeah, it's not two. It's three. We could do x squared times x squared. So that'll be a negative one fourth. We could do x to the fourth times one. So that's a positive one over 24. And we could do this x to the fourth times one, which is again a positive one over 24. Okay, so our first four terms then are 1 plus x, that gives you a negative one-third, so we get negative one-third x to the third. Those added together give you a negative one-sixth, and then you have more terms after that. Okay. Questions? I'm going to tell you, you need to memorize the series for e to the x. You need to memorize the series for cosine of x. What is the other one that I'm probably going to have you memorize? Sine of x. Sine of x is all the terms that cosine is missing. So that, that'll be the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n plus 1, over 2n plus 1 factorial. Just for fun, do we remember what a Maclaurin series means? Centered at 0. It's a specific kind of what other series? Taylor series. Is it okay if I just say that, or do we want to talk more about that? We're okay? Okay. Good so far? Okay. Good news is that we got only one example left, for today at least.
Okay, this is the last skill that I want to practice. Taking two summations and putting them together into one. So we are going to write the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 2 n c to the n x to the n minus 1 plus the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of 6 c of n x to the n plus 1. We are going to write that as one series. Sorry, I guess we probably couldn't see that. Okay, there are two requirements in order to add these two together. First requirement is we need the indices to be the same on both summations. Currently, that is not true. One starts at n equals 1, one started, starts at n, n equals 0. Any idea what the other requirement might be? Uh, yeah, close. Both summations need x to start with the same power. Because what we're going to want is we're going to want a constant times x to some exponent. So if we plug in n equals 1 here, this first summation starts with n to the 0 power. If we plug 0 in here, we start with x to the first. That's an issue. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite these two and then show you how to approach getting both of these requirements to be true. I always start with the second requirement. So start with the power of x. This first summation, if we plug in n equals 1, starts with x to the 0 power. Second summation, like we said, if we plug in 0, we are going to start with x to the first power. That's an issue. OK, so here's what you do then. There's no way that this first summation, or that the second summation, is all of a sudden going to start with x to the 0. Right? We can't add a term. So what we're going to have to do is rewrite this one so that it starts with x to the first also. What you're going to do is pull out the first term. So plug in n equals 1. When you do, you get 2 times 1, c1, x to the 0. Now your summation is going to start at n equals 2. It's the same summation, just starting with n equals 2. Sorry, this is not 2 to the n. I just forgot to write n. So that's 2 times n. OK, so now if we plug in 2, we get x to the first. If we plug in 0, we get x to the first also. Now the issue is that our indices are not the same. So here's what you're going to do. We are no longer going to think of this in terms of n. Here, we want this just to be x to some exponent. So instead of using n plus 1, we're going to use k, and we're going to call k n minus 1. So for that first summation, then, everything needs to be in terms of k. If we plug in n equals 2, we're going to start at k equals 1 to infinity. n is really k plus 1. So we get 2. Instead of n, we replace it with k plus 1 c k plus 1 x to the k now k is arbitrary it's just a series of numbers so what I'm going to do in the second summation I'm going to use k again this time though k is going to represent n plus 1 so here if we plug in n equals 0 we start from k equals 1 to infinity we have 6, C, N now is K minus 1, X to the K. 
And then I gotta bring this first term down, so that's 2C1. Now this looks a lot better. Now I am ready to add these two summations together. So this becomes 2C1 plus the summation from k equals 1 to infinity. We're going to factor that x to the k out, so I'm only going to bring down the constants. So I get 2k plus 1, c of k plus 1, plus 6c k minus 1, times x to the k. If you want to change it back to n, you can. If you aren't sure, what you can always do is start plugging in a few values of k. So find the first few terms from the original, find the first few terms here, and make sure they match up. Okay. Jonathan. They just represent a series of numbers. It's like, <laughs> this is the cop out in math. Like, k is arbitrary. It's just a series of numbers. So if you don't want to call it k, call it something else. So for like a finite series, you get an arbitrary series. Yeah. So Which like is okay. So we can call it, <laughs> we can call it like k1 base theory? Sure. Okay. You can. Eventually, though, you still have to get to one summation. Okay, I know that we don't like that, but I promise you I'm not lying to you. Okay. No, I, I got it. It's just, it just has to start from one to infinity, like, no matter what. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So here's the thing. 